Hello and welcome to this year's Christmas premiere. This is Tia with Tia's Crazy Craft Addiction. And it has been an awesome ending to my 2022. Had a pretty rough year this year. And I definitely, definitely have grown more. Not only in my health and my eating and my uh, weight loss goals, um, but also in my crafting and my acceptance of my addiction. <laughs> uh, so hopefully, if you are here, you've been enjoying the premieres thus far, and you are coming along to enjoy an awesome ride. What we're going to be doing to start off is just getting to know me a little bit more, talking a little bit more about some fun that I've had this year. Not only did we have an amazing end to our 2020, but we kicked the new year off just right. We kicked it off with hashtag blinging in the new year 2022, and what a fun time we had. Me and J-Rob, also known as DP Addiction Adventures, along with my goddess, Tima from DP with Sparklers, we offered suggestions, we offered tips, and we also entertained the creativity of all of our subscribers. What an amazing time we have, and we will be kicking it off again starting on the 30th of this year. We're going to have our third annual hashtag blinging in the new year 2023. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Make sure you come back and make sure that you guys just have a good time when it comes to your crafting, when it comes to selecting your canvas, and when it comes to hanging out with your favorite creators. Not only did I have a good time uh, the beginning of the year, but we also moved along to the midpoint with the Great Lakes Retreat. I kicked off my trip visiting my best buddy, Yes, I did. I went to see Billy with Billy's Crafting Lounge. I had an amazing time. We met up with Berta, who came in from Sitka, Alaska, along with my boo, Lizzie of Lizzie's World of Gems. And I'm telling you, we had a fun time. The trip in, all of the hostility, lots of deer counting because there were several deer. But when we got to the retreat, what an amazing time meeting up with everyone who are like-minded, who enjoy crafting. We had such a, a fun time. I couldn't wait to get on the list so that I can try and come back again next year. The food was amazing. The town was so rich with history. Make sure that you guys get on the list. Check with DP Addiction Adventures so you can come out for more. I hope that this doesn't offend anyone. It was made in jest and I had a lot of fun with it. But this is a poem written by me, Tia Smith. Um, that's copyrighted, don't steal it. My red-headed man is pouting again. And for all the world to see, we all took a vote and ended on a note. And ain't nobody happy is how it looks to me. We're stuck inside and can't go nowhere. And ain't nothing really open. But I got my wallet out, my tracking app on, watching every truck pass by, just a hoping. But I am alive with a smile on my face and my butterflies and glitter aplenty. But I'm struggling hard to sparkle and shine through the rest of this crazy, crappy Christmas 2020. Yes, so hopefully no one was offended by that poem. It was definitely something that was uh, meant to be a lot of fun. And hopefully that just gave you a quick chuckle. Now we all have amazing Christmas stories that we share from time to time. And obviously I'm no different. I have shared the best of our traditions, and I've also shared with my audience the worst of our traditions. Now, 
I do have a lot of subscribers who have sent messages to me of their favorite tales. And so that's what you'll notice across my premieres today and yesterday is that I've told you guys just some stories that came back special requests, okay? <laughs> now, one of the Christmases that I want to reminisce about and share about is my my daughter's Christmas. I want to call it her worst Christmas ever. <laughs> Obviously, she is an adult now, so she may go on to have her own experiences when it comes to worst Christmas ever. But I think I take the cake and I think right now <laughs> I'm still winning. I think my story is going to top maybe any that she may have in the future. To begin with, the unfortunate part about our story is that it unfolds right before Christmas when mom and dad had gone their separate ways. So my baby is now struggling with how house, households look, you know, when they have to entertain parents from two different perspectives. And I felt bad. I always questioned, was there something I could have done different? I'm sure dad did as well. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we weren't together and we couldn't make it work. And so there was a fear that my baby was going to suffer. So I was working hard like we all do. How many of you out there who have picked up extra shifts just to make sure that you can make this holiday special? Going into the pandemic and struggling through that time, how many of you had hopes that you could just make sure that you provided as much normalcy for your babies as possible? I'm no different. And even though I hadn't been struck by a pandemic, that was still something that bared heavy on me. I wanted to make sure that I made the best Christmas as possible because we were hit. So I wanted to get my children's smile and I wanted it embedded in my mind. One of the things that I made sure to do was to plan several activities, several outings, several crafting opportunities. Yes, we did everything imaginable. We went on to Carol. <laughs> Imagine us. <laughs> we knock on your door. It's dark. And we start singing Christmas carols. Are you going to actually open the door? Can we sing to you? Are you going to chuckle? Um, for the most part, we were well received. It was a lot of fun, but you know, it was the build up. It was the experience that mattered most. We made Christmas gifts that year so that we can send them off to the troops. We know that the troops don't have stores on the barracks and at their locations. So how do they send gifts to their loved ones? Well, we know nowadays how they do it. They pull out a phone or mobile device similar to what we do, but those weren't options then. So we helped them out. We made crafted gifts that they can in turn give to a loved one or request to have shipped to a family member. It was a beautiful experience and I'm glad I was able to share it with my kids. But I wasn't the only one who got to share with the kids. Obviously, dad has his time as well. Now, before mom and dad went their separate ways, I did kind of notice that he wasn't really interested in a lot of the Christmas activities. He didn't want to go to a lot of the outings. He had checked out. Uh, he started to really question, <laughs> why give credit to some other man? when I'm the man that's footing the bill. And while I can understand that, it still is just something that I wasn't ready or prepared to have to deal with. So this year, with no mom and dad together, the kids are going to have separate households to encounter. Now, that wouldn't have been the worst thing that could happen 
children love both parents. So I didn't have an issue with them going to dads at all. I definitely, you know, enjoyed my time when I wasn't with uh, the children. I got to be me. <laughs> I got to enjoy the dinners that I liked. <laughs> I got to drink wine. <laughs> uh, and more importantly, I got to watch what I wanted. I got to read the books that I wanted. You know, I got to disconnect from mommy dumb. Not that mommy dumb is horrible, but sometimes we just need to sit back. We need to be able to relax and we need to just be able to to inhale or to exhale so that we can face <laughs> the next day. So this was no different. It's his time and they're going to see dad. When they go see dad, mom, I, me, moi, <laughs> am so used to sitting and relaxing and enjoying my time. Probably the minute my babies walk out the door, I probably go running. And this time probably was no different. So they're off to see their dad. <laughs> you thought I was going to say the wizard. <laughs> uh, and I am ready to have the evening of my life. I have my Kindle. I have wine. I had a steak oh, that I was about to marinate and cook down to perfection. I could not wait. <sighs> the babies are gone. It is quiet. And I believe I had Hallmark on. So it is going to be several days of peace and quiet, of wine, yes, crisp, delicious tasting, steak, yummy goodness, and romance the way that I like. I am sitting there with my feet kicked up on the arm of my sofa. I got a glass in my hand as if somebody was there to serve it to me, and it was just me. And out of nowhere, the scare of all scares, the biggest fright that I've had in oh, a long time, a very well, I won't say really long because she scared me like that <laughs> another time as well. However, I was not expecting my baby to come plunging through the door. Not only did she come plunging through the door, upset, rattled, tears trickling down her face, me worried. I didn't know what happened. And she was by herself when she came walking through the door. Her brother was nowhere in sight. And I think I hear off in the distance, dad's tires squealing and spinning out as he starts off. And I'm like, what is going on? She tells me, through tear stained, not only tear stained, but she had little snot bubbles coming out of her little nose. She tells me that her and her dad got into an argument. And dad told her the worst thing that a father could ever say to a baby. And I am to this day in shock. Dad told her that there was no such thing as Santa Claus. And to my dismay, my baby, she was crying and heaving. Her poor little body was shaking. Tear stains and then tears over the stains. And I felt horrible. I didn't know what to say. Now, you know, as parents, we teach our children, don't you fib. Don't tell a lie. Your nose is going to grow if you tell a fib or a lie. 
We do. We, we, we tell our children that. We want them to be the best version of themselves as possible. And because we want them to be the best version of themselves as possible, what we don't do is teach them bad habits. We don't teach our kids to smoke, right? We go in another room, we try and hide it from them like they don't know, like they can't smell. I'm just saying. We don't teach our kids to cuss, right? They hear us cussing. They pick up the con. Oh, they can pick up the content of the conversation and give the cuss word back at the right time. They got the time and other insult and everything, right? But we don't teach it to them. What happens when they do it? Pop them in the mouth. So my baby's no different. I look at my baby. I don't want to teach. I don't want to lie, and I don't want to teach her to lie, right? And she's just crying, Daddy, Daddy said, Santa's not real, Mommy. Mommy, he said he's not real. Is that true? That's what my baby said to me. Is that true? And boy, what a dilemma I found myself in. What do I say? What would you say? Oh, the dilemma, the dilemma. I reach out for my child. I hug her. I kiss her ever so gently. I'm rubbing her back. I'm trying to soothe all the heaving and shaking. I'm trying to wipe her little face. Trying to get the snot bubbles out of her nose. And I say to my baby, if you know me, you know this answer. Oh, honey, I don't know why he said that. I really don't. Oh, mommy loves you. Give me a hug, honey. Give me a hug. Mommy just wants you to know that when it comes to Santa, just so you're, you're clear and we're on the same page, baby. If you don't believe, then you don't receive. And that's really been the motto ever since in our house, guys. I don't know. <laughs> Do you guys think I lied? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm walking the line. But what I will say is she understood and has never doubted Santa since.
Yes. Going to see Christmas lights and enjoying the Christmas atmosphere is so much fun. This is definitely one of the, the best times of the year. I love Christmas. Growing up in a traditional family, well, I don't want to say traditional because that word in 2022 causes problems. <laughs> but what I will say is we celebrate Christmas from November 1 through January 7th. Traditional Christmas. Put up the decorations, bake cookies, build gingerbread houses, go out and, you know, make sure the roof is safe because, you know, Santa has got to land on something extremely safe. So with that said, there are times where, you know, we try and get outside of our comfort, outside of our traditional family fun. <laughs> and uh, once my mom came to stay with us, you know, we tried to do some things a little bit different, especially things she's never done before. So 2020 happened and we were trying our hardest our hardest <laughs> to come up with ways to just get out of the home, to come out of quarantine. We're stuck indoors and we were bored out of our minds. We had a trip planned that was going to be so fantabulous. We were going to see the Ellen show. Word on the street was that her show was going to soon be going off air. We didn't know at that point how soon, but we definitely wanted to get out and just travel and enjoy as much as we could because we were stuck indoors and we had already hit 103 days, I believe. So what do we do? Everything is closed down. We could not get an Airbnb. Then it made no sense at that point to even try to get tickets to the Ellen Show, to Paramount Studios, to Universal Studios. It made no sense to try to go to any of those places. So unfortunately, we were stuck trying to plan other ways to have some family fun. And one of the ideas that came to mind was let's get together and let's go camping. Yes, awesome idea. We had several birthdays coming up in June of 2020. <laughs> so why not earmark that time by planning an awesome camping trip? <laughs> and boy, was it awesome. One of the things that we did was we made sure that we had the latest, the greatest, everything. I mean, the toilet that we purchased. Top of the line. We could have got a $60 toilet. No, 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 no. We could have got a $90 or $100 toilet. No, 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 no. Nothing but the finest toilet for us. I paid almost $200 for my toilet. And yes, it is comfortable. Yes, it is sealed. Yet, yeah, no, there was no aroma. It was definitely worth it. But this is what I mean when I say we were going all out and enjoying our experience. We got a condominium of a tent. You might as well call it a mansion. Everyone had their own separate bedroom, their own separate entrance into the tent. And then we did have a big giant living well where we could call it a living room. So it was amazing. So much fun to see, to shop for. We were going to live outdoors as if we were indoors. Who doesn't want to go camping and glamp? <laughs> uh, because it was my mom's first time. She hadn't done any day uh, trips. She hadn't really done a lot of hiking. She hadn't done any camping previous to that. This was going to be an Amazing time to try and introduce to her just, you know, some more simplistic things in life. How to eat and sleep outdoors, how to set up your own home, you know, how to keep critters out. <laughs> the problem with our plans 
is I live in Las Vegas, guys. I live in the Mojave Desert. When I say that that was a problem, keep in mind, this is a birthday trip. My mom's birthday is in June. My son's birthday is in June. And my bestie, Ty, we call her Booby, her birthday also is in June. What an ideal time to plan a family trip, but when everybody has something to celebrate. So that's what we did. <laughs> we created plans so that everybody had something to celebrate. And boy, oh boy, what a awesome time was it. We got together. We were packing up our stuff. Let me just tell you, you have to be able to think small when you're going camping. No, you can't take the whole fridge. No, you can't take your whole closet. Those are things that, you know, should probably be discussed beforehand. It took us longer <laughs> to pack up the vehicle than it took us <laughs> to, to stay at the, the great camping resort that I had planned. Now, I meant well, and I went online, and the amenities were beautiful, the few that we had. So I, I think overall, if I had to rate it, it would have been, it would have been five star by all means. What I forgot to take into consideration was the fact that I live in Las Vegas, the home of the Mojave Desert. And oh, what desert-like conditions it was in June for a birthday trip. <laughs> now, <laughs> we decided to go, I don't know why, but we went to we went to the western rim of the Grand Canyon. And it just so happened that day to be 118 degrees. Yes, I said 118 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe that's about 41 degrees Celsius. Just to put things into perspective for you guys. A lot of a lot of heat. A lot of heat. Might not have been the best time to actually go camping. <laughs> so we get there. We got to set up camp. Oh, my gosh. Do you know how hard it is to set up a mansion with separate entrances for everybody? It's hard. And the poles is high. And we probably should have practiced before we got to the campsite. Nope, it's not a good idea for the first time you set your tent up to be in the middle of the Mojave Desert, down in Arizona, on the western rim of the Grand Canyon in 118 degrees Fahrenheit, 41 degrees Celsius, I believe. I may be off by that because I don't use the metric system, but I'm just, I'm being, it's 118. I do know that. <laughs> so we are there and we are an all female camp. We are empowered. We are doing an amazing job. And my mom is getting hit on. There are seven campsites. Two were older men where one was a man, a son, you know, and the other were all gentlemen out for a guy's weekend. It's 118 degrees. We hot, we salty, literally sweating salt, trying to earn some sort of peace. We have been sighted and communicated with by the park ranger. He's worried that we are going to pass out. As it gets dark, the birthday girl not only was getting hit on, two gentlemen show up to ask the birthday girl, my mom, if they will have a campfire with her. And one of them felt really great. He was feeling amazing because he had the firewood. Still, try, still trying to figure out who thought it was a great idea 
who thought it was a great idea to sit by a campfire at 118 degrees. I, you know, <laughs> told my mom that I didn't think it was a good idea that my new dad be the new dad. He doesn't have common sense, mom. Just like us, like we're out here in 118 degree weather and whew, I'm telling you, it was hot. It was hot. I, we, we didn't sleep at all that night because we couldn't cool off. It was still 118 at one o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning, it was still 118. Three o'clock in the morning, guess what? It was still 118 degrees. We were so soaking wet with sweat and no one having got any sleep. We could not wait till some sunlight came up over this mountain so we could pack this condo up. And on top of packing the condo up, after one day, we were supposed to be there five. After one day, the goal was going to be for us to go ahead and lead a campsite. Not much we could do, not much we wanted to do. Because at that point, it was still 118 degrees. So with that said, maybe adventure sometimes can be stapled. Maybe sometimes we just want to limit how much fun we have. <laughs> and just so you guys are aware, I have had an amazing time on the channel. I have done lots of different uh uh, diamond paintings. I have done uh, different crafts such as cross stitch. Um, I have done the miniatures. <laughs> oh, the miniatures are definitely, you know, <laughs> they look fun. They look amazing. Um, but they do turn you into many architects and many contractors. So if you want to understand how to lay down flooring, how to have fun with your own insulation, how to wire for lighting and electrical, perhaps moving over to crafting journeys, crafting and crime daily, where she has a no Malone miniatures uh, program with me, um, Tia's crazy craft addiction, and Crashly, crafts with Crashly. Um, it's about winding up, but the group is very active. And a lot of us have had an awesome time on our Facebook Messenger, sharing our progress, sharing our woes, breaking our, breaking our wood projects. So if you're interested, make sure you guys head on over to Crafting and Crime Daily's channel where you can get the link and you can be put in the group. Next up... I know I talked about earlier this year the awesome fun that I had kicking off the new year with the hashtag blinging in the new year, which will be returning. But I also wanted to take a few moments to talk about how much fun I had with my hashtag love is in the air. And boy, was it fun. My co-host Lizzie with Lizzie World of Gems, uh, she was able to really join in where we, we get four couples and we feature them on each show. And on top of featuring a couple who's in love, a couple who maybe has uh, traversed time one, one, uh, <laughs> with one another, hand in hand, they will eventually compete for our game of love. So stay tuned. I'm going to send you guys a clip of last year's and make sure you, you know come back and so join far? me. With my new boyfriend. What? I hate going grocery shopping with him. Mm. I, hate it. I don't I don't like grocery shopping. I hate going grocery shopping with him because everything I pick up, he'll say, you don't need that. <laughs> I like, what? I hate that. I'm like, and then I get mad. Well, now's the time. <laughs> now's the time to discover all the things. All the things. Whether you can live Well, that's what we're going to deep dive into. We want to know everything yep. that you guys hate. What gets on your nerves? What gets on you? We're going to really ask these men. This is their time to shine. When the cameras stop rolling, don't kill them. 
<laughs> but we're gonna give them a voice. We're gonna let them get it out there in the world. We're gonna tell them talk to any man that could be walking past the room and their wife was watching this show. Talk to that man and get your frustrations out. Yep, that's what we're doing here. <laughs> Guess what? On hashtag love is in the air. It's gonna be a great month. <laughs> They're all off. Crashly They're says all, she doesn't cook up? or grow grocery shopping. <laughs> Crashley's husband just loves her. She just, I had she must. Jackpot. She hit the jackpot. Yeah, she did. <laughs> she definitely she did. Uh, uh, right, who, well. Okay, okay. I got it. I got it. I think there needs to be a prediction of who's winning this Love is in the Air collab. That's what I think. Okay, you got so J Rob and her husband, Crashley mm -hmm. and her husband, me and Jerry. Was there anybody else? Clem Those, and um, Lizzie. Clem and Lizzie. So four couples. And, Mm -hmm. and, who? and then at well, y'all the four couples. I don't four think couples. me and Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And then okay. at the end, our last uh, live, you guys okay. are competing with each other on oh, okay. our love okay. is in the air, newlywed. <laughs> Although y'all aren't all newlyweds, but our, our love is in the air, almost newlywed. Uh, game of love. The yeah. game. Of, do we get a crown? Do we get a oh. crown? We go. They do get a crown. What? There's yeah, Crashly wants to know what the content. Okay, she's made a con a clay crown. Okay, guess what? Guess what? It's gonna be blinged out with <laughs> sparkly. <laughs> we gonna give them back to you if you win. <laughs> I will not. I okay. Look, here's what I predict. I predict I will not be winning. <laughs> you don't think you'll win? She uh -uh. said, "There's no Jerry, motivation." Jerry and I are the most opposite there is. You'll, I guess you can find out more than an interview. I do not mm -hmm. think we'll win. I don't think we'll win. That's okay. You guys <laughs> might win the funniest couple. We might have a couple of different categories. All right, guys, who won the question and answer? Now, who was the funniest? Who'd you like the most? Vote for your favorite. You know, we'll have a fan favorite. There we go. So I love that. Um, just so you guys are aware and you guys come back. Um, it's all of our craftlings. So, yes, it's going to be Kerwin and Crashly. It's going to be Tim and J-Rob. It's going to be Jerry and Tima. And yours truly, our newest craftlings. Um, it's going to be Lizzie and Clem. Clem is crazy. I like him. I've talked to him quite a bit. So, <laughs> you guys crazy are going to have Clem, some fun. Huh? Mm -hmm. You're going to have some fun with him as well. So, um, we, we will have a show that we dedicate to singles. And me and Rebecca, we plan to to be our crazy selves. Um, you guys have shared lots of love and love stories with us. So, yeah, make sure you guys make the questions good. So we're here to answer and enjoy. But that's what this month is going to be about, guys. Love is in the air. <laughs> oh, Susan says, you are all so lucky. I did it all myself with four kiddos in tow. But I loved it and had incentive then. Oh, mm -hmm. J. Rob says, love, we have fighting words about our husband, hubby's Crashly. Great problem to have. Yeah. Yeah, her and Crashly have been going at it saying, uh, J Jennifer says, Tim's going to take Kerwin down. I can't wait to see this. <laughs> this is going to be so much. <laughs> Crashly, says, Crashly says, J. Rob's going down. So, uh, uh, J. Rob says, her hubby does laundry and the dishes. Oh, you guys heard it here first. It's going down in chat. It's going to go down on our last show of February, which is going to be, I believe that's the 23rd Wednesday night. Make sure you guys tune in. We're going to feature our final couple. And then the game is on. So come back. We're going to ask them questions, do or die, whoever answers. Make sure that you guys understand how the game is going to go. So you guys are going to have a cell phone. One person is going to have the cell phone in their hand. You guys are going to be sitting back to back and you oh. will send your answers and then your partner who doesn't have the cell phone <laughs> will have to answer. And guess what? <laughs> I'm going to have the answers right here that I can show and share with them. So there will be no cheating. <laughs> well, can but you again, tell me the questions ahead of time? Can I, can I know? <laughs> oh, so we're sending you the answers. You guys are going to send me the answers. Oh, oh, oh. So we'll have four couples. Yes. Don't worry. Don't worry. And where's Billy? Billy has helped oh. me formulate this idea. I should have, well, he, I was going to say I should have him ask the question, but it would take him a half an hour to get the first two questions out. So <laughs> sorry, Billy. I love you. 
<laughs> but yeah, he's helping me behind the scenes, like get all of this. And he's telling me about, you know, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Tia, Did Billy make that bad. video? <laughs> I made the video. I just got all the ideas from him. I you did a great though. job. Y'all, you did a great job. People love that video. <laughs> they love that video. Thank That's you. Good. So, um, yeah, I got the idea from him. He told me what to do. He was like, you can do this and you can do that. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm going to give it a try. It took forever. <laughs> six hours later, I was like, Lizzie, look what I did. <laughs> I know. A one minute video, six hours. I hate, I hate the, how long mm -hmm. it takes to do all that editing. Yeah, it so. took about six hours. But yeah. to be honest, I didn't ask you guys for anything. I went, searched, and pulled all of your stuff. It probably would have been a Yeah, lot I less saw that. In I my bathroom. Said, you mm -hmm, took my picture from in my bathroom <laughs> with no glasses on my face. I saw that. <laughs> I got to oh, be careful what cute. I post online. I thought it was cute. I was like, oh, oh I my love gosh. this picture. Oh, my gosh. I'm I like, think where did this come from? earlier that day or the day before you were going to do your hair. And I remember when you posted, I was like, I love that picture. So I literally had to go and search and see. Um, did you see J-Rob's picture where she's looking up? Yes. Oh, God, yes. I love that picture. She had some other ones, but I was like, no, I like this one. <laughs> Poor Crashly. I I had to steal her. Um, I couldn't find any. So I had to steal her um, her pic that she uses, like her Facebook pic. Sorry. I should have asked, guys, but I wanted it to be a surprise. And, yes, I've had a wonderful time with my girls, the craftlings. <laughs> and in case you're wondering, the craftlings are made up of J-Rob, my honey bunny with DP Addiction Adventures. Crafts with Crashly. I crashed. <laughs> uh, Big Sis Rebecca with Crafting and Crying Daily. My goddess. Tima with DP with Sparklers. And my Lizzie of Lizzie's World of Gems. Make sure that you guys stick around, hit the subscribe, and make sure you come back to enjoy more videos with me. Hope that you've had an awesome time during these premieres. Some of the things that I want to make sure you guys are aware of is that this is a time where sometimes we lose sight of what is in front of us. We lose sight of the meaning behind the season and we can forget those around us. Make sure that we are being a lot more passionate, a lot more compassionate, and make sure if you are struggling with anything that you reach out. We can't be there, we can't listen, we can't help with resources. If you're not reaching out, if you're not telling us what it is we can do to help you. Sometimes it's just a conversation. Sometimes it's just a matter of who you're communicating with. If you're not feeling supported, reach out to someone new, okay? Thank you all for tuning in. I hope that you're having a wonderful holiday. I hope that you continue to have a Merry Christmas and make sure you guys come back out and you support us at our hashtag blinging in the new year 2023. Thank you again for watching. You have a great rest of your day. Bye.